hard, but wow. aside from that, it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's fun. Cool. You probably be sleeping well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right okay. Well, um, this is probably um, everybody's going to show up, so I might as well go ahead and share the screen and run the video we we're going to watch. It's called uh, Journey Inside the Cell. Um, it goes into a little bit of how utterly complex what's going on inside you is. It's amazing. And, you know, we have like over 10, we have hundreds of millions of, I think it's like 300 trillion cells in our body. And they have all this stuff going on in them that we, we just take for granted. We don't realize it's going on, but it's mind blowing when you see it. So let me pull up that video and get that going. Let me do the screen share. Can you guys see it? Yep. Okay. Francis Crick first proposed that chemicals called bases along the spine of the DNA molecule function as alphabetic characters in a written language or digital characters in a machine code. This animation shows how this digital information directs protein synthesis. First, a large protein complex separates the tightly wound strands of the DNA to prepare it to be copied. During this process of transcription, a protein complex called a polymerase produces a single-stranded copy of the original instructions. Here we see this copy, a messenger RNA molecule being constructed inside the... I'll just mention the messenger RNA, um, that's the mRNA that you hear about when they discuss vaccines, so, so you can kind of understand what's going on. Polymerase, as individual bases are positioned and added to the growing strand. Now we see the polymerase in action from the outside as it spits out the messenger RNA transcript. Next, this RNA transcript approaches and passes through a molecular machine called the nuclear pore complex, an information recognition device that controls the flow of information in and out of the cell's nucleus. Now we see the genetic assembly instructions on the messenger RNA approaching and arriving at a two-part chemical factory called a ribosome, the site of protein synthesis. As the messenger RNA transcript passes through the ribosome, the process of translation begins. During translation, a mechanical assembly line builds a specifically sequenced chain of amino acids in accord with the instructions on the transcript. These amino acids are transported from other parts of the cell by molecules called transfer RNAs, which link specific sequences of bases to corresponding amino acids. The sequential arrangement of the amino acids determines the type of protein constructed. When the construction of the chain is complete, it is transported to a barrel-shaped machine that helps fold it into the precise shape required to perform its function. After the chain is folded into a protein, it is released into the outer cytoplasm to do its job in the cell. Stop the screen and sharing get things back together. Yeah. Okay. 
having a hard time getting my screen back. What's going on here? There we go. All right. Any thoughts on the video? I think it's like what strikes me, I'll just say what strikes me first is that there's no way that happened by random chance. You know what I mean? The um, ratio of mutations, of bad mutations to good mutations is about a million to one. You know, when you're talking about mutations that happen in biology, you know. And uh, some vast majority of mutations will hurt or kill an organism, right? And in that, like million to one, negative versus positive, destructive versus constructive. You know, once in a while, you might be able to get some happy accidents, but you'll never get anything where it's encoding and decoding information. No matter how, you can let it go forever, it'll never develop that, you know? And uh, what we have there is inside of our cell, we have a blueprint, a set of blueprints in our DNA that's literally encoded in those A, G, T, C. Those are adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Those are the, the four amino acids that make up all the proteins, right? They encode, encode along the DNA. And so um, you got that double helix. The DNA is those, those two strands, it's like a twisted ladder. So it's like two strands, you know, twisting. And then, so when it goes through that process, it's, it pulls that strand apart and it copies one side of that strand creates the messenger RNA, transcribes it to the messenger RNA, which then goes and travels, and then it gets duplicated into a protein or whatever appropriate part is necessary, right? So in other words, your body, every cell in your body encodes and decodes information, right? It gets even more complicated than that. That's just like the basic DNA replication process, right? Um, so if you just, you know, consult your common sense, you. We, we all have uh, a lot of life experience. How many, how, how often do you see something developing naturally that involves encoding? It just doesn't happen, you know? So to me, that's a really nice signature of God's artwork is the fact that we have encoding and decoding in our bodies. And technically our cells meet the definition of a computer. You know, there's a, there's a base definition of a computer um, that scientists use and our cells meet it. So we have tens of trillions of computers encoding and decoding information and communicating with each other in our bodies. And none of us knows it, none of us seem very aware of it, but it's, it's a mind blowing truth that's going on under the surface. Right? And to me, it says God, it says artist, you know, it says designer, it says engineer, you know, I think, uh, I guess this takes me back to um, the first, some of the first videos we watched about, you know, how can something come from nothing um, along those lines. That's what it takes me back to. Um, yeah, and on, I mean, in, in, as I was thinking about this now, it brought a question to my mind like it to me it points to I, I i think just thinking about the design in this like i think anyone would be able to come to the conclusion that some type of god could exist <clears throat> right because there's so much design um so then i was just thinking like other religions and i know there's so many different small sects in the sect s-e-c sex that one um out there um but like some of the main ones like for example islam do they talk about creation and like intelligent design because i mean in the bible like you know there's genesis and i feel like scattered throughout is talks about god you know and his intentional design and making you know us in his image and i don't know what do you guys think about other religions and how they speak to creation? Islam is uh, on the same page with us on that, on, on creation, you know? 
um, Al Ghazali, a Muslim scholar, was the guy who came up with that name, Kalam, or it's it's named after him, Kalam, for the Kalam cosmological argument, because uh, William Lane Craig did his PhD on that. I don't know, he was studying it and thought that guy made a really good case. You know, along he was kind of contemporary with Thomas Aquinas. You know, and um, so yeah, a lot of uh, Muslim scholars are on the same page in terms of design and the evidence for it. In a lot of my debates I did on, online in the interactions, there was a lot of Muslims jumping in on the same side, supporting, you know, the case for design. So it's kind of odd that you know if Jesus comes up, we're kind of on a different page from them. But if it's just we're talking about God, we're on the same page, you know. Yeah, that's super interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I think this is really, this really is another thing where it points to an intentional design. <laughs> It really does. Gets that conversation going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody want to play devil's advocate and propose a, a means by which they thought that could happen naturally? And we can all try to poke at it, and find flaws in it. I actually just had another example um, about what Kyle was talking about in his question. Um, there's a lot of people that talk about the earth as like mother earth. I think that comes from like Buddhism or whatever, but a lot of people say it like even so-called Christians. Um, and it's kind of like, well, you think the earth creation, so like where did the earth come from kind of thing, you know? So I don't know, some people in their thinking. <laughs> Yeah, that's that reminds me of a thing we had talked about before. Is a lot of people lately are are saying uh, the universe told me this, or the universe told me that, or the universe such and such. Hey, the universe is not conscious. I think inside you have an urge to say God did such and such, but you don't want to say God, you know? which is odd, you know. So instead of God, you want to pretend this big inanimate object has free will, you know, kind of weird. Technically, a lot of people that don't want to say God, they actually do. And they, like, I think we talked about this once in Kyle's Connect group um, last year. But a lot of people say, I'm just saying it just to <laughs> say what it is, but OMG, you know, or they say it out or like, oh my gosh, or any of those things that like relate to that. Um, and it's like, you are, you're saying God, but you're saying his name in vain because you know how powerful he is. And, but you want to, so you want to put him down because you know, he's real. You just don't want to admit that he's real. So instead you put him down and yeah i have similar reactions when people blaspheme it's like you don't know what's you don't know what kind of fire you're playing with you know to constantly people these people that constantly misuse god's name it's no good there's so many other substitute words you can use you know you don't have to throw his name around like that you know? Any thoughts on the video, Ashley, or anybody else? Yeah, I just thought it was interesting that we touched on like DNA out of nowhere because yesterday, last semester I took microbio, so I somewhat still have some memory of like everything that goes on in microbio. But yesterday, Abby had to watch um, a documentary about DNA and they have this new technology called CRISPR, which basically can modify DNA and so I thought it was kind of crazy that we touched on DNA and it makes me think like, wow, the opportunities that God gives us over time, it's like insane. But yeah, I thought that was crazy. CRISPR, everybody, look it up. It's insane. Yeah, it's uh, heavy stuff. Uh, C-R-I-S-P-R, -R. it's an acronym for something where they uh, can splice, dice and splice DNA and RNA and um, produce results that just a few years ago were impossible. It's a little creepy because they're, you know, going into like animal human hybrids and uh, the Chinese are really off to the races with that kind of stuff. Um, 
there was probably something like CRISPR that they use in the Wuhan virology, virology lab to create the uh, COVID-19 virus, something like yeah, that. I don't know. Yeah, they can like take out, it was saying that like it can take genes out from an egg or like sample out from like a woman's egg and they can look and see, or they can take a bunch of eggs and see which one will have like the compatibility of like what that mother or father want, like meaning like hair color, if that kid's gonna have, or if that cell, not that cell, that egg will produce like a disease in the future has a higher chance. I just think it's so crazy that it can, that we can do that because that's like unimaginable to me. So we at the point where like an in vitro fertilization, they can screen, I only want to, I only want a blonde kid so they can screen the eggs and make sure it's going to be blonde or something like that. Yeah, they, yeah. That's I'll have cool. to send you the documentary. It's like 14 minutes long, but it was very fulfilling right. and insane. Yeah, that's, that's kind of right on the edge of eugenics, you know. Mm -hmm. Eugenics is like, you know, sterilizing and disallowing uh, the propagation of certain people because you don't like their genes, you know, which mm -hmm. America, actually some judges approved that early in the 20th century. It got overturned later, of course, but you know, pretty terrible stuff. And uh, we're not super far from it, you know, so we should be careful not to go back there. You have any thoughts on all that, Norm? Okay. No, okay. nothing like well put together. Okay. Cool. How about you, Annette? Um, yeah, I have lots of thoughts. First of all, I don't know how anybody, even just looking at nature and creation, can be an atheist or agnostic or they, they've got to really close their eyes to, to a God because even everything is created from a cell. Plants, people, humans, even how can, how can people and women just be so blinded to say, oh, it's not a baby. And they know that when they get pregnant, it's a baby. It starts from a cell. They, I don't understand all these, how people can just term things and just turn a blind eye mm -hmm. to kill their baby or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know. I just don't know how people can believe in evolution because to to come up with from a cell to to who we are and what we are and then going back to what um ashley said apparently they've had this out for a while because malahia's favorite one of malahia's favorite movies is my sister's keeper and it's about um a parent who um had a had a an older daughter and she had leukemia or something and they wanted to keep her and keep her going so they kind of went around and and got some of the eggs and and found a way to create the perfect child that when she grew up could give the sister kidney or whatever she needed but um so if you want to watch the movie, it's called My Sister's Keeper. It's by Alec Baldwin. Mm. And um, they say I don't know how much is true and how much is uh, um, fiction. Mm -hmm. but okay. Real cases out there. All right. So they saved the, they were able to save the, the other sister? Uh, no, oh. she chose. She chose not to. And the other sister, when she came to that age, um, went to a judge and got um, emancipation from her parents mm -hmm. so that she wouldn't have to give any more body parts to her sister. And her sister was OK. Her sister chose to pass away at the end. Mm. Wow, heavy stuff. Steve, um, mm -hmm. what is your experience like? What arguments have you heard? Well, 
and, we, and we've talked about, you know, the whole something coming from nothing thing, but specifically like when you have brought up DNA and stuff, what are some of like the kickback or like counter arguments that you hear from atheists or others? Well, lots of appeal to authority. You know, it's all like, well, the experts have decided, the experts have concluded, the experts this, the experts that. Well, not really. The amount of people that have actually looked at the probabilities that I talk about are tiny. It's very few people, you know. Everybody else is just going on the assumption that it's been proven. They don't look at the nuts and bolts of it. When you look at the nuts and bolts of it, like uh, uh, Lehigh University professor uh, Michael Behe, and you, you look, you know, everybody, he, he decided to look into it. All his colleagues always say, oh, it's already been proven. It's been proven. It's been proven. He said, I want to see the nuts and bolts of it because everybody evades it when, when I ask about it, right? So he did a deep dive and he said, this is a bunch of BS. And, so, you know, lots of his colleagues did the same thing. Engage or I'm talking about deep scientists who have been in the field for years, you know. They just were operating on that assumption too. But when you get down to the mutation rates, that's what it all boils down to. You know, they have tracked mutation rates in nature, right? And secular scientists, I'm not talking about young earth creationists or people that are on the fringe. I'm talking about well-accepted secular scientists have identified that it's about a million to one, the negative to positive, uh, uh, the mutation ratio. This is about a million to one negative mutations to positive mutations. So you almost never get anything positive happening. It's because of that second law of thermodynamics, things tend to go towards disorder in this universe. It pervades the universe, right? So anytime you have random radiation mutations, usually it's from cosmic rays from outer space or something like that, you're rolling the dice and it's usually not gonna be a good roll. It's, it's a million to one, it's gonna be bad. Right? So how do you get an aggregate aggregation of all these destructive mutations producing something that's elegant, it's beautiful, it, it it's, has the feeling of classical music, it's so you know, elegant and lovely, and, you know, the, the DNA stuff, right? Chaos doesn't lead to that. You know, a mind was behind that because chaos never results in stuff like that, right? And I think what it is, is a lot of people just, they constantly getting fed this narrative that Darwinism was, just, you know, it was proven a long time ago, it was established, blah, 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 you know. And they, when they get told that, it's baked into the cake. It's, that premise is, you know, assumed every day in school and in the media, you know, you're constantly immersed in that for years. It's hard to not just go along with it, right? But when you look at the actual data, the nuts and bolts of it, it's not true. In fact, our genome is getting worse and worse every year. It's, we are accumulating more de-evolutionary mutations every year. The human genome gets worse and worse every year that goes by. So it's, it's actually the reality of it is contrary to the fantasy. They think it's all getting better and better and you know, everything's getting more sophisticated as you go along. No, it's actually, if you look at the nuts and bolts of it, the actual data is getting worse and worse which tells us a mind had to be behind getting it all elegant and beautiful to begin with, right? And we are, to we are going towards, you know, ugliness if God doesn't intervene, but he, I think we have good evidence to suggest he's going to intervene. So we're good. I think it just clicked for me in the opposite direction for the first time. Like, as we've talked about before the law of thermo, what is it? Second law of thermodynamics. Like, oh, yeah, that things naturally go towards disorder. And like, I've understood that, but I think it's pretty powerful to think about how, yeah, things would have to be going towards order at some point, right? To come up with all this stuff that we see today on earth, right? Is that, am I following that correctly? That's exactly the point. But that's not just looking at our world and what we know, that's not how things work. Mm -hmm. It's okay. very... Got when it. you think in a certain way, it's very unnatural because the natural order of things is to go into chaos and go into disorder and chaos and so forth. Something very orderly, something wrap those things and, and fine tune and engineered and, you know, got them all just right and got those things all orderly. That, that's a deliberate effort of a mind to get it that way because by random chance, it would never get that way. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty powerful thing to think about. Yeah. I remember when I was, uh, you know, 19 or so uh the police came out with the song synchronicity and the the idea was fascinating to me and i was inspiring a lot of people the idea was that that everything goes into harmony everything gravitates towards harmony and towards order and towards all these magic coincidences and all this and that 
yeah, it was really great when you're young and you don't know any better. But when you think about it, you, you have life experience, you, you go through life, you realize, no, it's not how it works. That's yeah, a nice fantasy, but it's actually the opposite of that. Things tend to go towards disorder. And we, with our minds, have to engineer order, right? Order only comes when a mind engineers it and makes it happen. So in our personal repeated and uniform experience, we, we experience this every day in our lives that nothing's going to come into order on its own spontaneously. We have to make it happen. So if we just kind of regurgitate that experience that we've had onto the universe, what must have happened to get it into place and get all these marvelous, amazing creatures into place. An engineer had to be involved and an artist, I think. What do you think? I Go ahead. I just said I agree. That's all. Cool. What do you think, Molly? Here? All right. Well, if we have any other thoughts on that, you understand. Let it flow. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Cool. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I actually wanted to go back to what Ashley was talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you um, said that God allowed CRISPR as an opportunity for us. Is that what you were saying? Um, no, I was just kind of throwing out like an idea that it's like kind of amazing to see um, I don't, I wouldn't stand maybe to say like God, I don't know, kind of a hard thing to answer. I was more so saying like, it's amazing to see how much like God gives us basically like the opportunities, the science and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, if that makes sense. Okay, so basically that. Um, okay, yeah. so I actually wanted to, um, I guess, rebuttal on that. Um, I don't believe that this new technology is from God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we live in a fallen world and there's yeah. so much that, you know, I mean, it's on humans. Like God gives us free will to do what we want with the intellect that he gave us, um, you know. It wasn't supposed to, this world wasn't supposed to be like this, but this is what happened. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, the fact that God created all of us, like why would he be in favor of this new technology that we get to decide what, how our children turn out, you know, like they're God's children. So like, that's why he designed all of us and he designs the future generations. And we're all placed here on this earth at a certain point of time for a certain purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't, I feel like this whole thing with CRISPR is like evil and you know, like it's, I don't know. It just, yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point of view. Um, I haven't had time to like really, cause I learned about it yesterday. So I hadn't really had time to like look too much into it besides what like I was given um I think it's just interesting knowledge like from my perspective um but yeah good points I was thinking it was like um it's a tool that can be misused like a yeah an axe I could use an axe responsibly or I could attack somebody with it right um and I think they have helped some people with genetic disorders with it. I might have that wrong. So, but if they have, okay, they're, using okay, it to, they're using it to help people with, you know, with problems and using it responsibly, then I don't think it's intrinsically bad, but it's something that could be used for bad things, right? It probably is being used for bad things, but I think it's important for us to be accurate and careful about, you know, when we describe things, I don't want to say CRISPR is, 100% evil and it can't be used for good unless I'm sure of that. And my understanding of it is I think it can be used for, and most of its uses are for uh, helping people that have problems, right? Yeah, I have thoughts. I mean, I, 
I think we're trying to stretch the boundaries of like what we can consider good and bad and like what's good and evil. Like what if CRISPR was used, I don't know, to change the color of someone's skin? Is that like good or evil? Well, it's probably neither. Like it's just something that you can do, right? And like, is that going against God's will? Well, probably not considering that we can tattoo ourselves or like, you know, probably not considering that we can change the color of our hair. Like, are those things within or outside of God's will? I think it's within, it's just super unimportant. Like we're talking, you know, he, he's going to use y- you in your life in a very particular way. And to say that you can get in the way of it just by like, editing your genetics or however CRISPR is working. I don't really necessarily know. Like, I think the benefits of it is like, maybe you could develop a generation that is less susceptible to like birth defects or, you know, diseases, or you, you know that there would be a birth defect or something like that uh, in advance or something, you know? Um, and that's, that's super useful. That's just being an informed uh, nation. And I think that's like, you know, using science and, and the things that God has given us, right? Which, which is, uh, well, our, our designed ability to learn things. Um, I, also, <clears throat> I also think that it's weird to start saying things like God-given knowledge. Um, you could get into a philosophical debate pretty quickly of like, what knowledge did we start with? And what knowledge is like, you know, inherently given to us like did we start with language well probably maybe maybe an abstract version of language with adam and eve we don't necessarily know exactly what it looked like we know that they communicated with each other and with god but we don't know so like unknowns and you could get into a lot of debates with just god-given knowledge and what is uh, good knowledge or what's bad knowledge. Um, so I, I tend to lean more on like, it's probably a good thing. And probably a lot of things that people are worried about don't actually matter. And then like, maybe you could say there is some evil going on, but again, I think you're getting into more of a philosophical argument. Um, it's just, yeah, that's my thoughts. We can agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. It reminds Kyle of Crispix cereal, apparently. Anybody ever have Crispix? Does like off brand checks? <laughs> I was trying to open the file and it was like showing me something from Zoom. So it just had like Adobe, Microsoft and all these like computer softwares. And I was like, what is, what is he sending? And then I clicked on it again and it showed me a box of cereal. That was funny. <laughs> Wait, I guess Crispix is not off brand because it's Kellogg's. Mm. Whatever. I don't think I've ever had it, honestly. What I think, you know, as far as like CRISPR goes is um, there are Lots of scientists that will use it responsibly, hopefully the majority of them. But there's, unfortunately, there's all these squirrels on the fringe in, within science that always have to, once something is invented, they always have to fiddle with it, you know? Um, sometimes giving them new knowledge is like giving liquor and car keys to teenage boys. They just want to push it and push it and push it further, further, further. And that may be why we have COVID-19 is because they kept fiddling with viruses in the Wuhan Virology Lab. And, experimenting with gain of function and this and that, you know, so, so I think it, it really requires responsibility. Every development of, of this sort requires human responsibility to make sure it's constrained and it doesn't get out of the bottle, you know? Uh, so I, I hope people are making very strong uh, guidelines for making sure CRISPR doesn't get abused. It's something that I don't think you can really take biblical guidance on, like to an extent. I mean, you could do ethical guidance like with an ethics board, but it's just such a different topic. I don't know how you would say, you know, like put the right boundaries on it. You know, I think there's things that we probably don't want as a society maybe, but even then society's getting really weird. So yeah, I've seen some of these um, 
people that are you know altering their body and you ever seen the guy that made himself look like a like a dragon he's got a couple horns and you know he's so but is that like evil later. right he's, is that evil or stupid like you know what i mean uh, i think you it's can't both. confuse the two i don't think it's evil like i want i want to get piercings and i want to get tattoos right and like that i don't think, i don't think piercings and tattoos are intrinsically evil but i think once you take it to the point where you're just a public spectacle and that's the whole point of your life that's what i think where he crossed the line of evil where he's just it, it, life is all about him and his little uh his little spectacle you know he's made himself into a human amphibian a human reptile whatever you know i don't know but you can make the same argument about clothes like oh you're dressing too nice you're you're becoming a spectacle and like does that matter like i want to look in an interesting way i want to have a body or i want to be artistic if right you took and like clothes it'd be evil too uh, I, if you if you what you say i was saying if you took it too far with clothes it'd be evil too what i'm saying is once you once you cross the line into where it's all about you and your own little ego you know what, what, what waxer says you know whatever you think about the most that's your god and if people are thinking about their image the most then they've self-deified themselves you know and i think if somebody's whole deal is about their instagram page and their their selfies and every day it's a different selfie and every day they got a little alteration in their piercings or i think that's a wasted life they have a right to do it i'm not going to get in their face they have a right to do it under our system but do you think god is impressed with that i doubt it i think god's probably saying yeah that's a wasted life i didn't put you on earth to create a little instagram fantasy world for you to constantly every day your whole mission is think of new ways to do selfies and there's a lot of that's how a lot of people are living right now and it's pathetic i don't think that's best and highest use of their life i don't think i don't think god would think that you know and again, I'm not, I'm not a legalist. I'm going to get in their face about it. But anytime you go too far into the, it's all about me direction, that's problematic. Yeah. That's a good point, especially like, I mean, I can't argue that if, if it is something that you're doing, that is just all about you, then yeah, you're creating yourself as an idol. Right. And that's, that's unhealthy. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, <laughs> it's encouraged, you know, stretching the imagination of like, what is actually evil at the end of the day or like what is actually bad and and some people just think like well it makes me feel uncomfortable so now you're doing something against me and and that's bad and like i don't know about that you know what i mean yeah i agree it's got to be uh you have to refer to something objectively like it can't just be that it offended your feelings that's not the the standard of whether something's evil or not you know so i agree with you is that what you're Kind of yeah it, it's going to like the legalistic argument right but and you could actually apply really things all the way back to like CRISPR and then genomes and then we might be able to talk about i don't know like dna and stuff like that but like you could be legalistic and say nope it doesn't fit in the traditional sense of medicine and uh science and what what i'm comfortable with and therefore it is evil and and that's what i would encourage to like get around thinking of that being said um you know, you could, you could be doing it in a way that is just like, well, the human body is terrible and we need to like change it completely to be, I don't know, what some person thinks is optimized for the best human body ever or something like that. And, and yeah, maybe that's not good, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I'm, I think I'm probably on the same page with you there. You know, like, it sounds like you have some libertarian leanings, like keep the government out of our lives. I'm, I'm with you on that 100%. Like, I don't want, I don't want anybody to be, I don't want any, anybody to be regulated by the government over stuff like style choices and that guy on the Instagram doing his reptile thing, whatever, you know, I don't want, I don't want any, I don't think we have the right to get in other people's faces about that stuff. But I'm talking about, you know, it's like, we're just kind of observing what's going on spiritually. I think somebody's crossing a line when they get too self-absorbed like that where they're kind of wasting their life you know but yeah I, I definitely don't i definitely agree with your point to be thoughtful about what we criticize we should be very careful about that and i also well so the the foundational thing that made me a little 
let's say, let's go back to like that person that does a weird like horn thing, you know, which is like not super cool, right? Um, <clears throat> a lot of people would say that's evil because you're straying away from what your body is supposed to look like. Uh, and that is not the part that's evil. You, I, I would agree that, you know, um, maybe you're taking your self image and worshiping yourself and placing yourself as an idol. That could be a serious thing. That's an issue, but like customizing the way you look, I don't think so. I don't think that's evil. I agree. And then, you know, of course it could, you could get into a, okay, what, how far is too far? And then to me, that's between them and God, because I, I can't mic around. Yeah, you're right. That's a good stance to have on that. I think, uh, I guess my general thought I'll share on the, the CRISPR thing is like, like where I, where I can see that it's like, if it, it reminds me of the Tower of Babel, how they're trying to build a tower up to God. It's been a while since I read the story. And then ultimately God's like, whatever his reasoning was, and I don't remember because I read the story whatever, it's, but he confuses them so that they can no longer build the tower anymore. Um, so my thought is with CRISPR, people could be like, yeah, we're going to build, you know, a better human than God. Um, and hey, maybe if they start doing that, God will intervene. <laughs> but at the same time, can they, like, it's not God, if they do make something, whatever they're doing, I don't know the ins and outs of CRISPR. It's not of God. So like, it's not. God didn't create it. So I, I don't know. It, it's, it's something else. I, to, to me, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know what I'm thinking, but it reminded me of the Tower of Babel and how it could turn into something like that. But also it reminds me, it, it makes me think that like, at the end of the day, every human God creates and that's his creation. And that's the same no matter what people do with this CRISPR thing. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that made me think of, um, you know, Elon Musk's Neuralink. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, uh, which I think is a terrible idea, but you know, he's fiddling around with, uh, you know, Neuralink, which is implanting things in your head that are connected to wires where you can uh, control, a, they showed a monkey playing a video game, just using his mind to control it a couple of days ago. And so, so, but the uses of that is so good, right? So, like, you can restore sense, you can restore someone who's paralyzed. Like, that's the idea behind, you know, those revolutionary inventions. Sorry, I totally interrupted you that, and that's not good, but it's fine. It's fine. counter counterpoint of view, right? Yeah. No, I, I agree that, you know, so like, I have uh, several friends that have issues that you know, like quadriplegic whatever you know that that would help them and that would be wonderful you know if it could work out they've actually had technology like that for quite a while but this is like another maybe a little advanced but the problem is when they take it beyond that and they want to make a new creature and they want to go transhumanism which is i think the next thing he's going to start with all the charity kind of stuff help the handicapped and so on and so forth sure but if he goes beyond that and tries to make bionic people and, you know, advanced creatures that are better than what God made, so to speak, you know, then that would be a step into evil, I think. Um, Klaus Schwab, the head of the World Economic Forum, is pr promoting this stuff, saying we all need to merge our, our um, physical identities with our mental identities and merge with the machines. He's out there promoting this consistently lately, and. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, tuned into it in, in Elon Musk's trip. So I think this is a case similar to CRISPR where you can use it to help people up to a point. But if you if you go too far into it, you can abuse it. Sorry, what did you say, Annette? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that my mic was on. Okay. The Tower of Babel was a good uh, reference, though. I, I thought that was pretty good. Um, I think the fundamental difference here is maybe the people in the Tower of Babel, I don't know what the intentions of what they were really trying to do. I always heard the story was like, they're trying to just get into heaven. Um, 
and, and to me, that means like they're replacing God entirely, right? Like, or they're replacing what God, like replacing a way to get into God's kingdom, which is not what we have authority to do, right? Like, obviously we don't. Um, and it's not really about the tower, right? The tower was pretty insignificant. We've already beaten that. So why hasn't God killed us again? It wasn't because of the tower, it was because of their intentions. And with CRISPR, I feel like it's like one of those instances of like, scientists probably are not thinking, let's engineer a human that is like, for, for starters, they probably don't recognize God's design necessarily. And even if they did, they're not framing it in a way that is better than God's design. It's using God's design to go further, right? And if you frame it like that, well, suddenly it doesn't sound so evil. But I don't know. Um, the Tower Rel was pretty interesting, though. That was a good reference. Yes. My recollection is that God had told them to disperse and occupy the world, and they rebelled against that and said, no, we're going to sit here and make our own little tower up to heaven, you know? And he said, well, I'm going to confuse your languages and then you're not going to be able to communicate and you're going to therefore disperse and occupy the world. So apparently that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's a good key difference as well. Like disobeying his command to further the gospel. Right. Well, this is way before the gospel. It was just, oh, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, further like his, you know, intentions, like similar to furthering the gospel. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, that's what I meant. Hey. Yeah, so uh, if we can, you know, stay responsible and help people out, that's great. Help uh, quadriplegics, you know, that's fantastic. I always fantasize about making music with my mind because the music in my mind is so much better than what I can play. If I could ever get to the point where I can go straight from my brain to the speaker, oh, look out, man. it'll be sick, you know, but. I'm not sure if I trust people that implant stuff in my brain. That sounds a little dodgy. Definitely a trust thing. Any other thoughts on all this stuff? Oh, wait, Neura, Neuralink? Neuralink. Yeah. I've never heard of that. So it's like Elon Musk is designing a microchip to go into your brain that will help in multiple different ways. That's so interesting. Yeah. It's insane. They were able to record a lot of the stuff that I've seen has just been recording data. Um, but yeah, like you said, Steve, the intention is to write data or at the very least, like write signals, right? Give those signals off. They can read where the data and in, you know, information is coming from, then they can send those signals artificially or something like that. Uh, and I've seen it to where like they'll drop an animal like a foot or something like that you know like a small amount of a drop right and the animal you know like when we drop when we feel gravity pulling us down and we get the sensation of dropping kind of similar to like if you lean back too far in a chair and you get that gut feeling mm -hmm. you know um they will be able to read that like they've seen the signals coming from the animal's brain real time when it happens uh, which means that they could write that signal and you could be like laying down perfectly flat on the floor. And if they wanted to, you know, with this chip, uh, give you the sense that you're falling off of a chair. Right. That's yeah. Wow. yeah. Does that yeah. guy ever sleep? <laughs> Holy crap. Good question. <laughs> Project's going. Thank you for that explanation, Norm. I appreciate it. Unfortunately, the, um, Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum guy, was talking about, you know, ending privacy. You know, he was talking about government surveillance over all your thoughts, you know, and like ending, the, there's no need for privacy, that kind of jive. You know, I was like, hey, yeah, we, we're going to keep our privacy, buddy. You're not, you're, you're not plugging us into your big, uh, everybody knows everything system. You know, so potential for abuse, for sure. So you know, stay diligent. Refuse and resist if they try to... Um, make you cooperate with it, I guess. I think it's a long way, it's a ways off, but um, just the stuff that's being kicked around in conversation, you know, we're probably close to it, you know, so.
yeah, it's not unrealistic. And I think a lot of people are a little bit blind to how realistic it could be that it could be abused, right? Um, that being said, I'm a big proponent of it because it's literally something that like can solve very complicated problems. Um, you know, like uh, she probably like Tourette's could probably be solved by it. You know, like if they record enough cases with Tourette's, um, speech disabilities, um, learning disabilities, ADHD type of stuff like that. Like what causes you to get distracted? You could stop being so distracted with like, you know, those serious, serious cases of that type of stuff. Right. Um, so good intentions. Awesome. That it's going to be able to solve those things, but like, yeah, it could definitely be abused for sure. And he, there's no way anyone's denying that whatsoever. What was that movie? Um, was it Minority Report or something where they were like busting people for crimes? They the computers said they anticipated they were going to commit in the future. You know, um, that's what I want to avoid. Scenarios like that where they're like, "Hey, uh, you were fantasizing about robbing a bank, buddy. Uh, come with us." It could happen like right now. It could happen today. It's good. It could have happened for the past few years. Like, yeah. So, we yeah. currently do that. Like <laughs> the NSA currently does that, like for, you know, terrorists, it's just applying it to a different problem at that point. So we got to keep a, a watchful eye on the watchdogs. I'll tell you. Uh, we've been at this for a while, so probably a good time to get prayer requests. Unless anybody has any other thoughts they want to talk about. If not, then uh, what can I pray for you on? Norm, you got anything I pray for you? Uh, strength and confidence, like always, you know, like it's been pretty key and, and relevant. And I've been feeling, you know, better recently. So that's been great, you know, in terms of just confidence and strength. Good to hear. Yeah. All right. Um, Aloy, you have any prayer requests? Um, for school, and then also the family I babysit for, they're um, finally going back to church this coming Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and the parents haven't been to church in like 20 years, so. Well, cool. Okay. Yeah. That's great that they're coming back. Are they coming to the gathering or a different church they go to? Um, no, I don't know what church they're going to. The wife doesn't even know. Um, the husband found it. Um, so I'll find out after and then um, if it, like, I guess her issue has always been um, when she grew up, like she wasn't a part of the right church, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's why she kind of like fell away from it. Um, but yeah, the husband was like, we really need to go back to church. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I don't know where they're going, but if it doesn't like work out for them, um, I was going to invite them to the gathering. Cool. All right. We pray for them. How about you, Ashley? How can we pray for you? Probably just um, strength through the last few weeks of school. Okay. And Kyle, what about for you? Um, I guess that my I wouldn't have any mouth pain when my Novocaine, whatever it's called, anesthesia, anesthesia wears out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. And then um, we should pray for the retreat on Saturday. Just Good call. Yes. Annette, how can we pray? For, uh, is Annette gone? I think she took the uh, phone. Okay. She's out. All right. Yeah, she had to go pick up my siblings. Before. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and pray. Um, Father God, please bless um, Ashley with strength through these last few weeks of school. Please let everything finish out nicely. Um, please bless Alohi with her schooling also and let everything go well there and bless her situation with the babysitting family. Please let everything go well with them coming back to church and let them, please let them get plugged into make it a habit. 
And um, please bless Kyle, bless Kyle with regard to his mouth pain. Please let it be minimal. And uh, please let everything get uh, sorted out and completed there nicely. And please let the retreat go well, and music go smoothly and all that good stuff. And uh, please bless Norm with strength and confidence and guidance in his um, situation where he's transitioning into the new field. And uh, thank you for how you bless him with the strength and confidence. And thank you for salvation and all the other blessings. And praise be your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Good seeing you guys. Have a great night. See you now. Saturday, if not soon. Bye.